Today in the news, Nvidia's RTX VSR was tested, Windows 11 is tempting, and Meteor Lake is not dead. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with NVIDIA. The company has been teasing their RTX augmented video super resolution feature for quite a while now. And just yesterday, they finally launched it. In the original teaser video, RTX VSR actually looks amazing. I mean, take a look at this. I mean, the clarity on all of the close and far away objects is significantly improved, but that's just their marketing material. The end result with the actual released version of VSR is, Nah. To enable it, all you have to do is go into the NVIDIA control panel and go to the adjust video image setting and it should be on the right side. There are four levels of VSR so you can adjust it to your liking. Keep in mind, this only works on RTX 3000 series of GPUs and up. A lot of outlets have posted screenshots of it in action like Tom's Hardware, Tech Power Up, and others, and the consensus seems to be that, well, it barely makes a difference. In fact, some have even complained that on faces at lower resolutions, resolutions, the end result sometimes looks worse because it kind of smooths the face over, and in other occasions, the faces have an uncanny valley vibe to them because of the AI enhancements. It's clear that video upscaling is a whole different beast compared to gaming upscaling. In gaming, you have more information to work with, like the game engine can send out motion vectors and rendering pipeline information to the AI to predict and help reconstruct the image at a higher resolution. But with video upscaling, you have just that, the video. So the result was definitely predictable. But given how much hype NVIDIA put on RTX VSR, it's disappointing to say the least. Definitely not pixel perfect. What are your thoughts on this? Let me know down below. Moving on, Windows 11 just rolled out a bunch of new features, and if this build is stable, I might actually switch to it. First, if your Microsoft account has access to the new AI augmented Bing search, uh, it's gonna be built into your search bar. So you can press the Windows key, ask it to generate something for you, and it's gonna open an Edge browser window with whatever it is that you asked. The Windows search bar also got some extra tweaks, which reverts it back to the OG Windows 10 style with the uh, box at the bottom. It seems to be just a Aesthetic. And another change is in the notepad. It can actually be tabbed, which is neat. One change that's going to make my life way easier is in the snipping tool. You can now record video with it. What's really cool is that you can actually choose a section of the screen and record that instead of the entire screen. Now, don't get me wrong, I know OBS exists, okay? But this makes my life so much easier since I don't have to bother with uh, the way OBS reframes things and I don't have to manually crop out what I don't want in the screen. And lastly, iPhones and Android support got a little bit better, with iPhones users being able to take and make phone calls and access iCloud photos. As for Android users, well, they did add a couple of things, but only for Samsung users. Not gonna lie, the snipping tool in Windows 11 is definitely the thing that's gonna make me switch in the near future. And lastly, we got Intel in the news. You might've heard that the company is refreshing their Raptor Lake CPUs and canceling their Meteor Lake architecture for the desktop market. Well, it looks like Meteor Lake is going to make it after all. A couple of weeks ago, an Intel slide leaked showing that a Raptor Lake S refresh was all that was gonna come until Arrow Lake. Meteor Lake would have been a mobile chip only, but TLC over on Twitter, who successfully leaked a couple of workstation CPUs from Intel before they even launched says that, well, Intel still intends on releasing Meteor Lake, but only with a maximum of six performance cores and 16 e-cores. That's two performance cores short of the Raptor Lake CPUs. Obviously, it's a different architecture that would benefit from some IPC increases, but that can't be good for the productivity side of things. Since Meteor Lake is on a different socket, it's going to be interesting to see how uh, Intel might market this after the Raptor Lake S refresh. My guess is that it could be really good in gaming, but offer only a small improvement in productivity. I don't know, we'll have to wait and see. Anyways guys, that is pretty much it for the video. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment. If you wanna talk about today's stories, as usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.